Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, we're following a lot of news this morning. So first of all, John Conyers, longtime member of the House, He's passed away, right. age of 90. So taking a look at that. Also, we're going to talk in the panel about Katie Hill resigning. Mm -hmm. Is there a double standard here after um, some what I consider revenge for porn photos were posted of her online. We'll get into all of that. Um, also, major developments overseas, Sagar. Yeah, that's right. So we have the former leader of ISIS, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. He was killed in U.S. Special Operations Raid, northwestern Syria. Uh, it was a pretty crazy raid. I mean, the details yeah. that the president laid out on Sunday were really remarkable. Basically, U.S. Special Operators staging in a base in Iraq, flying over hostile territory for two hours almost. Very, very low level. They actually even took some incoming fire from people who saw the helicopter hmm. um, and they neutralized gunfire on the ground got to this heavily guarded compound they basically cleared everybody out of the compound killed yeah. or captured everybody else took all the intelligence Baghdadi himself descended into a tunnel which was apparently a dead end and they, he went into the back of the tunnel he took three of his children three children in the compound with him <sighs> uh, blew himself up so with a suicide horrible. vest Collapse the tunnel. Yeah, I mean he's you know he's a despicable man and a rapist. Absolutely, we've got one of the. I um, mean one of the most evil people on the planet. Probably. Yeah, let's not forget. I mean he raped and murdered. He raped and captured an American citizen, Kayla Mueller. She was a, a I think she was a Red Cross worker working in Turkey, passed into Syria, pure humanitarian in intentions. Captured by ISIS, was kept as a personal slave to Baghdadi himself. So. But wait, I thought he was a uh, religious scholar, yeah, an, an austere, austere religious, religious scholar, scholar you know, the according to the Washington that Post. Is that you know there these are the people who want us to believe that there's nothing intrinsic about the Islamic faith that has anything to do with ISIS. So actually calling him a religious scholar kind of validates a, actually, the theological part of this. That's a great point. Right. I mean, listen, I am I am of the view that these major terrorist killings are probably oversold in terms of what it will actually mean sure. for ISIS and for our safety, et cetera. However, um, it was so blatantly obvious, the way the media covered it and the way the Democrats reacted to this. They cannot give Trump any credit on no. anything. You know, I can't stand Trump. But listen, right. you beclown yourself right. when even when you went all in on, you know, Osama bin Laden is mm -hmm. dead and Obama's a hero and all that. And then when a similar thing happens under Trump, to the extent that any president deserves credit for these things, which, frankly, a lot of the credit does should lie elsewhere. But if you gave Obama credit, you kind of got to give Trump some credit yeah. here too and not part they parse the words of course right. he has a very different way of celebrating you know the killing of terrorists yeah. than Obama did was the photo staged mm -hmm. all this stuff and I think most Americans look at it and go come on guys just like give yeah, him a little bit exactly. of credit that no exactly <laughs> which is yeah, look I can't stand Obama either but the decision to greenlight the bin Laden raid is I mean a heroic decision like yeah. he basically told them he said if they get Cap, if the Pakistani military starts coming in, shoot your way out and fly out. He basically greenlit a war on Pakistan in order to destroy Osama bin Laden. That takes a lot of guts. Well, and you okay? never know. Like, when one of these things goes yeah. awry, if a U.S. service member is captured, oh, is tortured, man. I mean, it's yeah. horrific. The so there is a lot the of risk involved. Literal nightmare scenario, right? Because the operators at the time had thought about, they said, in Pakistan raid, but they were like, well, do we just stop shooting? Do we sit and sit in a Pakistani prison for two years? Well, and he said, no, shoot your way out and get Get out of there. Get out of there. Uh, and the president said basically the same thing. So look, well, we've got, all credit to where it's due. Absolutely. Yeah. We've got Glenn Greenwald on the show, uh, Pulitzer yeah. Prize winning journalist, of course, from The Intercept, to talk about that and other things as well. All that and more today on Rising.